All right, everybody, I am more excited about this episode than I've been about any other, and I've got a lot to show you. I've done so much this week, but most importantly, Draco is done. Wait, 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 not yet. I gotta finish putting the play together first. I've got a lot of things I'm gonna show you in this video, a lot to wrap up, so I have, I have a bunch of parts I gotta make, a bunch of little things I need to finish. But the most important thing of all, I'm gonna try and cram a lot of stuff I've done this last week. Stick through to the end, we'll show you the finished product, and I'm gonna show you what it took to get there. Roll the intro. All right, what I'm doing is I'm making another mold. I get really sideways on some hills sometimes when I park up in the mountains. And so uh, draining fuel, if I had half or three quarter above was always a problem. This will be a mold that looks like that. Got a couple hours, I'll knock out a few four parts and we'll be good to go. All right, I'm making my shark fin. <laughs> and uh, that'll make it plenty smooth to put on a wax and we'll be able to pop our parts off it. This should work really well. Let it dry up. A few more coats and we'll start pulling parts on it. Today I'm doing my oxygen. I'm excited to get those mounted, rubber isolated. I've got two mountain high oxygen tanks in here for the four place oxygen I've got throughout the whole aircraft. I've got them on the side for the back. I got them up front. I just got a few lines left to hook up. These here, a couple connectors. Back to work. But what I'm doing here is I'm making another mold. I made several out of wood. If I'm making, pulling several parts out of it, I gotta do that out of wood, Bondo. But I'm just making one part, and I know I'm only making one. This is by far the easiest way. Pick this up at Lowe's or Home Depot. Can of spray adhesive. Spray it, wait 15, 20 seconds, stick another piece on, spray it, stick another piece on. I literally just slapped a few pieces together, took this sheetrock saw, and I just, freehand cut chunks out of it. Then this foam is so easy to sand, you literally can take off, if you have a, hard, a hard, sharp edge, you can take off a half inch just like that. If you wanna make a mold in seconds, there is a 10 minute mold. Set this down, drape six layers over it, I will have a mold done in 30 minutes or less start to finish when you use something this simple. But you can't get it off, bonds to it. You gotta break it out of the inside. It's a one-time mold, but I'm only making one backup camera light. So I wanted to show you how I do it. If you want a 30 minute mold, this is the only way I know how. <laughs> Let's get to work. This will be my night vision camera. I'm gonna start with this little foam block I glued together with Loctite spray glue. Let's get it done. It's coming up on one in the morning. My last carbon fiber part I needed to make, I'm gonna paint it, and it's for my night vision camera. So the way this works is this drops in, and I'll just, it's kind of a wedge fit, and then I'll bolt it in like that. Night vision. <laughs> so I'm doing the body work on the last of my carbon fiber parts I've got Two of these for a really high rise vent for my wings. And then I've got this actually points to the rear. This is my light. I'll have a camera built in for my backup light and cam. So I've got this, a couple of these, and some big bearings over my high lift gas fill nozzles. So then after that, I'll paint them tomorrow. I'll be done with paint on everything. So we're gonna make it. <laughs> All right. That's it. <laughs> I got all the filters in, five filters. Here's the intake, they snap on, goes into the turbine. I'll close out the filters. I got a landing light inside the nose here. It's more of a recognition. And uh, I've got my heat shield on around the hot section of the aircraft. I've made my own little aluminum rings where the hoses go on. <clears throat> I don't know if it, it bugs any of you guys, but the little scat tubes 
They're always a pain to get on to different fittings, especially carbon fiber ones. So I made these and I made them just a few thousand smaller and the hose just slides on perfect. So it's a lot easier to get this cowling on and off. Anyway, this is the first time everything's installed. There's the wire for the quick connect for my light. Filter close, for filter close out. I'll screw this down. Let's get this installed on the plane and take it flying. <laughs> All right, that does it. This will be my camera pod backup light. <laughs> I'm ready to glue it, screw it, tattoo it. Oh wait, that's not it. <laughs> Let's ins get us get it installed. My kids have been such a great help. Alex, thanks for coming down and staying till two in the morning to do carbon fiber and body work and Dex for doing my interior. Dylan for coming down and giving me a hand. Ashlyn is a huge support. I love my kids and they've been a great help, a great support. Help me get this project done. I love you guys. And thanks, my, my wife was good too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, the Wilga Draco is officially finished. When going through some of the checks for the first ground runs, I was really excited. I had almost no squawks. I would love to have a plane that its first run had zero, but there's always something. And let me tell you what some of those were. And they were minor. My N1 RPM on ground idle was about 3% low. Flight idle was about 4.5% low. My linkage to go into beta was off by about a half a turn. All these things are tiny, but they're critical for safe operation. When you're transitioning to a touchdown, going into reverse, you want all the RPMs perfect. So those were minor adjustments. We got really close. We literally did one taxi run, made the notes, came back, made adjustments, went out, and I didn't want to change anything. We got it on second round, so I'm real happy with that. Some of the things that I played with on ground runs was how much reverse thrust I could throw to the aircraft to assist it to stop. Now, on a tricycle geared aircraft, they actually don't like you to go into reverse and actually back the aircraft up. The prop in reverse tries to pivot the plane onto its tail and they start backing up and they don't realize that they're on the edge of a teeter to the tail and then they hit their brake and the tail quickly smacks the ground. Fortunately on Draco, I want to be able to land, hit my wheel brakes and jam it in reverse. And here's the benefit. On a tail dragger, I can do that. The thrust over center of the fulcrum point pushes the tail down onto the ground and I can't flip it over that direction. A tail dragger, you're worried about hitting the brakes and going over forward. So reverse thrust, I want all of it. 
to a point. So here's where it changes. I would love to have unlimited reverse thrust and throw three or 400 horsepower in reverse. I never would go to that level, but here's the problem. Yes, the tail's gonna stick to the ground and I won't go over. Yes, I can hit the brakes harder. Here's the transition of adjusting how much reverse I wanted to set my stop on Draco. And that was finding out at what point when I throw the air forward out of the prop, it mushrooms forward and comes back. It recollects when you're still got forward motion and comes back around your rudder and your elevator. However, if you get too much reverse thrust, the mushroom cloud that's pushing forward in front of the plane will go big enough that it will come back, envelop your elevator and your rudder, and it will blank it out entirely. There's a critical phase of touchdown before you can go into reverse. I can go directly into beta, maybe stop my forward momentum, give it a little bit of reverse, but at a certain thrust, I can actually mushroom the air forward and blank my tail, and blanking out your horizontal and your rudder by going into reverse with too much power is gonna make things a little bit interesting. What's really fun is I got to play with that and work my way into it. I couldn't even tell you how many ground runs I've done up and down this runway in the last couple of days, but I've had a blast. And now I've got my reverse thrust exactly where I want it. I can come in, I can get up to speed, pull it back, simulating a touchdown at 40 knots, We'll find out what that really is. I don't know if I'm gonna be 50 knots was the old touchdown speed of the Wilga, and it's gonna be less than that for sure. We don't know what it is yet. But I went ahead and took it up to the old speed, and then I jam it in reverse, and I wanted to see at what point the tail blanked. And I've got my reverse exactly where I want it, so I can give myself some stop and still keep control of my control surfaces on the back of the aircraft. All right, everybody, I hope you had fun. Draco is taxiing. There are so many modifications we have done, and on an upcoming video, I'm gonna tell you all about what we did and how it worked out. So I'll go into more detail. Come along and join us. We are ready to fly. We're waiting for one last little piece from the FAA sign-off. They have been a great help. I, I couldn't be happier. We made an actual book on the service maintenance schedule on this, and they were a great resource and helped us go back and forth, make the modifications, and get it right. They're there for our safety, and they've been a great help, so thank you guys. All of you who are out there who've been following along, I hope you keep following, because Draco is going for first flight any day. Come back, like, subscribe, because this plane is going in the air.